Vyasa, Sanskrit, Vyasa literally, compiler, is a central and revered figure in most Hindu traditions. He is also sometimes called Veda Vyasa, Veda Vyasa, Veda Vyasa, the one who classified the Vedas, or Krishna Devipayana, referring to his dark complexion and birthplace. He is generally considered the author of the Mahabharata, as well as a character in it, and the scribe of both the Vedas and Puranas. Vyasa is also considered to be one of the seven Chirangjivans long-lived, or immortals, who are still in existence according to Hindu belief. According to the Vishnu Purana, Veda Vyasa is a title applied to the compilers of the Vedas who are avatars of Vishnu. Twenty-eight people with this title have appeared so far. The reason for this 28 people is that in every yuga in the Dwapara of a given Manvantara in a given Kalpa Brahma day Veda Vyasa who is also incarnation of God comes down. Currently we are in Sveta Varaha Kalpa of 7th Manu called Vaivaswata Manu and 27 Maha Yugas have completed and we are currently in the last phase of 28th Yuga Kali Yuga phase, the festival of Guru Purnima is dedicated to him. It is also known as Vyasa Purnima, for it is the day believed to be both his birthday and the day he divided the Vedas. In the Mahabharata Vyasa appears for the first time as the compiler of, and an important character in, the Mahabharata. It is said that he was the expansion of the god Vishnu who came into a Parayuga to make all the Vedic knowledge available in written form which was available in spoken form at that time. He was the son of Satyavati, adopted daughter of the fisherman Dusharaj, and the wandering sage Parasara who is credited with being the author of the first Purana, Vishnu Purana. There are two different views regarding his birthplace. One of the views suggests that he was born in the Tanahan district in western Nepal, in Vyas municipality of Gandaki zone of Tanahan district, and his name, Vedh Vyas, names his birthplace. Another view suggests that he was born on an island in the Yamuna River near Kalpi, Uttar Pradesh, India. Vyasa was dark complexioned and hence may be called by the name Krishna, and also the name Dwapayana, meaning island born. Dhritarashtra born of Ambika, and Pandu, born of Ambalika and Vidura born to a maid, were born from Vyasa's powers Siddhis. Vyasa is believed to have lived on the banks of Ganga in modern-day Uttarakhand. The place was also the abode of the sage Vashishta along with the Pandavas, the five brothers of the Mahabharata, according to the Mahabharata, Maharishi Vyas and his disciples and the sage Viswamitra decided to settle down in a cool and serene atmosphere after the Kurukshetra war. In the quest for a peaceful abode, he came to the Dandaka forest and, pleased with serenity of the region, selected this place. Since Maharishi Vyasa spent considerable time in prayers, the place was then called Vasara, which became turned into Basar in Telangana due to the influence of the Marathi language in this region. <laughs> Early life According to Vishnu Purana that Sri Vyasa Deva Krishna Dwapayana Vyasa or Ved Vyasa, son of Parasara and Satyavati and composer of Mahabharata was born in an island on Yamuna at Kalpi. According to the legends, in his previous life, Vyasa was the sage of Pantaratamas, who was born when Lord Vishnu uttered the syllable, Bhu. He was a devotee of Lord Vishnu. Since birth, he already possessed the knowledge of the Vedas, the Dharmashastras and the Upanishads. At Vishnu's behest, he was reborn as Vyasa. Sage Parasara was the father of Vyasa and the grandson of Sage Vashistha. Prior to Vyasa's birth, Parasara had performed a severe penance to Lord Shiva. Shiva granted a boon that Parasara's son would be a Brahmarshi equal to Vashistha and would be famous for his knowledge. Parasara begot Vyasa on Satyavati. She conceived and immediately gave birth to Vyasa. Vyasa turned into an adult and left, promising his mother that he would come to her when needed. Vyasa acquired his knowledge from the four Kumaras, Narada and Lord Brahma himself. <inaudible> Veda Vyasa Hindus traditionally hold that Vyasa categorized the primordial single Veda into three canonical collections, and that the fourth one, known as Atharvaveda, was recognized as Veda only very much later. Hence he was called Veda Vyasa, or, splitter of the Vedas, the splitting being a feat that allowed people to understand the divine knowledge of the Veda. The word Vyasa means split, differentiate, or describe. The Vishnu Purana has a theory about Vyasa. 
The Hindu view of the universe is that of a cyclic phenomenon that comes into existence and dissolves repeatedly. Each cycle is presided over by a number of manus, one for each manvantara, that has four ages, yugas of declining virtues. The Devapara Yuga is the third yuga. The Vishnu Purana Book 3, CH3, says, in every third world age Devapara, Vishnu, in the person of Vyasa, in order to promote the good of mankind, divides the Veda, which is properly but one, into many portions. Observing the limited perseverance, energy, and application of mortals, he makes the Veda fourfold, to adapt it to their capacities, and the bodily form which he assumes, in order to effect that classification, is known by the name of Veda Vyasa. Of the different Vyasas in the present Manvantara and the branches which they have taught, you shall have an account. Twenty-eight times have the Vedas been arranged by the great Rishis in the Vaivasvata Manvantara, and consequently eight and twenty Vyasas have passed away, by whom, in the respective periods, the Veda has been divided into four. The first distribution was made by Svayambhu Brahma himself, in the second, the arranger of the Veda Vyasa was Prajapati, and so on up to twenty-eight. As per Vishnu Purana, Guru Drona's son Rishi Aswatthama will become the next sage Vyasa title, who in turn divide the Veda in 29th Mahayuga of 7th Manvantara. Topic. Chronicler of the Mahabharata Vyasa is traditionally known as the chronicler of this epic, and also features as an important character in it. According to the legend, the sage Vyasa was the son of Satyavati and Parasara. During her youth Satyavati was a fisherwoman who used to drive a boat. One day the sage Parasara was in a hurry to attend a yaga. Satyavati helped him cross the river borders. On this account, the sage offered her a mantra which would result in begetting a son who would be a sage with wisdom and all good qualities. Satyavati immediately recited the mantra, and thus Vyasa was born. She kept this incident a secret, not telling even King Shantanu. After many years, Shantanu and Satyavati had two sons, named Chitrangada and Vichitravarya. Chitrangada was killed by Gandharvyas in a battle, while Vichitravarya was weak and ill all the time. Satyavati then asked Bhisma to fetch queens for Vichitravarya. Bhishma attended the Swayamvara conducted by the king of Kashi present-day Varanasi, and defeated all the kings. He abducted three princesses Amba, Ambika and Ambalika. Amba, later was a source of trouble to Bhishma. Amba was in love with the prince of Shalva and when Bhishma learned about this, he allowed her to go to Shalva, who rejected her. She came back to Bhishma and asked him to marry her, which he could not do to his vow. She shuttled between Bhishma and Shalva with no success. Due to this she vowed to kill Bhishma. During the wedding ceremony, Vichitravarya collapsed and died, and Satyavati was clueless on know how to save the clan from perishing. She asked Bhishma to marry both the queens, who refused, as he had taken a vow and had promised her and her father never to marry. He, therefore could not father an heir to the kingdom. Later, Satyavati revealed to Bhishma, secrets from her past life and requested him to bring Vyasa to Hastinapur. Sage Vyasa had a fierce personality and was rather unpleasant in appearance. Hence upon seeing him, Ambika was terrified and she shut her eyes, resulting in their offspring being born blind. The child was Dhritarashtra. The other queen, Ambalika, upon meeting sage Vyasa turned pale, which resulted in their child being born pale. He was Pandu. Alarmed, Satyavati requested Vyasa meet Ambika again and grant her another son. Ambika, instead sent her maid to meet Vyasa. The duty-bound maid was calm and composed, she had a healthy child later, named Vidura. While these are Vyasa's sons, another son Shuka, born of his spouse Pinyala Vatika, daughter of the sage Jabali was his true spiritual heir. Shuka appears occasionally in the story as a spiritual guide to the young Kuru princes. In the first book of the Mahabharata, Vyasa asks Ganesha to assist him in writing the text. Ganesha imposes a precondition that he would do so only if Vyasa would narrate the story without a pause. Vyasa set a counter condition that Ganesha understand the verses first before transcribing them. Thus Vyasa narrated the entire Mahabharata and all the Upanishads and the 18 Puranas, while Lord Ganesha wrote. Vyasa is supposed to have meditated and authored the epic by the foothills of the river Bees in the Punjab region. <laughs> Vyasa's Jaya Vyasa's Jaya literally. Victory 
The core of the Mahabharata is a dialogue between Dhritarashtra, the Kuru king and the father of the Kauravas, who opposed the Pandavas in the Kurukshetra war, and Sanjaya, his advisor and charioteer. Sanjaya narrates the particulars of the Kurukshetra war, fought in 18 days, chronologically. Dhritarashtra at times asks questions and expresses doubts, sometimes lamenting, fearing the destruction the war would bring on his family, friends and kin. Sanjaya, in the beginning, gives a description of the various continents of the earth and numerous planets, and focuses on the kingdom of Bharata lineage that comprises India, Nepal, Tibet, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Sri Lanka, Iran, Cambodia and several other countries in South Asian subcontinent. Large and elaborate lists are given, describing hundreds of kingdoms, tribes, provinces, cities, towns, villages, rivers, mountains, forests, etc. of the ancient region of Bharata Varsha. Additionally, he gives descriptions of the military formations adopted by each side on each day, the death of individual heroes and the details of the battles. Eighteen chapters of Vyasa's Jaya constitute the Bhagavad Gita, a sacred text in Hinduism. Jaya deals with diverse subjects, such as geography, history, warfare, spirituality and morality. <laughs> Ugrasrava Saudis Mahabharata The final version of Vyasa's work is the Mahabharata. It is structured as a narration by Ugrasrava Saudi, a professional storyteller, to an assembly of rishis who, in the forest of Naimisha, had just attended the twelve-year sacrifice known as Sanaka, also known as Kulapati. Topic. Reference to writing Within the Mahabharata, there is a tradition in which Vyasa wishes to write down or inscribe his work. The grandsire Brahma creator of the universe comes and tells Vyasa to get the help of Ganapati for his task. Ganapati writes down the stanzas recited by Vyasa from memory and thus the Mahabharata is inscribed or written. There is some evidence however that writing may have been known earlier based on archaeological findings of styli in the painted grey ware culture, dated between 5000 BC and 3000 BC and archaeological evidence of the Brahmi script being used from at least 300 BC. Other texts attributed Vyasa is also credited with the writing of the 18 major Puranas. His son Shuka is the narrator of the major Purana Bhagavat Purana. The Yoga Bhashya, a commentary on the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, is attributed to Vyasa. The Brahma Sutra is attributed to Bhadarayana which makes him the proponent of the crest jewel school of Hindu philosophy, i.e., Vedanta. Vaishnavas conflate Vyasa with Bhadarayana because the island on which Vyasa was born is said to have been covered with Bhadara Indian Jujub, B -E -R, Zizifus Mauritiana trees. Some modern historians, though, suggest that these were two different personalities. There may have been more than one Vyasa, or the name Vyasa may have been used at times to give credibility to a number of ancient texts. Much ancient Indian literature was a result of long oral tradition with wide cultural significance rather than the result of a single author. However, Vyasa is credited with documenting, compiling, categorizing or writing commentaries on much of this literature. In Sikhism In Brahm Avtar, one of the compositions in Dasam Granth, the second scripture of Sikhs, Guru Gobind Singh mentions Rishi Vyas as an avatar of Brahma. He is considered the fifth incarnation of Brahma. Guru Gobind Singh wrote brief account of Rishi Vyas's compositions about great kings. Manu, Prithu, Bharat, Jujat, Ben, Mandata, Dilip, Ragu Raj and Aj. And attributed to him the store of Vedic learning. See also Guru Gita Parasara Topic Notes Topic References The Mahabharata of Krishna Dwaipayana Vyasa, translated by Kasari Mohan Gangalai, published between eighteen eighty three and eighteen ninety six. The Arthashastra, translated by Shamasastri, 1915 The Vishnu Purana, translated by H. H. Wilson, 1840 
The Bhagavata Purana, translated by A. C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, 1988 copyright Bhaktivedanta Book Trust the Jataka or Stories of the Buddha's Former Births, edited by E. B. Cowell, 1895 <inaudible> <inaudible> External links Quotations related to Vyasa at Wikiquote Media related to Vyasa at Wikimedia Commons Works written by or about Vyasa at Wikisource The Mahabharata – Gangalai translation, full text at Sacred Texts com